Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In our previous videos, we looked at how to use the service registry and the circuit breaker managed services from Total Cloud Foundry with your Spring Boot Spring Cloud application. In this video, you are going to see how to use the config server managed services with Spring Boot Spring Cloud application. I'm going to use the same simple client Spring Boot application that we created in our previous videos. The one thing that you need to add in the form.xml is a config client dependency for Spring Cloud services. You need to add the Spring Cloud services static config client of Pivotal. That's the only dependency that you need to add in this application. Now let us go to our Pivotal web console and let us try to add the managed services to our space. All right, I'm going to click on the marketplace and I'm going to search for config server. The config server is available as a trial version. Select this plan. Give a name for your config server. And click on create. The config server is getting created. Now let us go to our GitHub account and let us create a repository there so that we'll create our properties in the repository and this config server will automatically pull the properties from the GitHub account and it will share to the Spring Boot application. The Git repository, I've created a simple repository, configuration hyphen repository. Inside the configuration hyphen repository, I have a folder configuration and inside that I have an application.yaml which holds a property configuration.property value testing from config server and github let us add the implementation for this property in our spring boot application and let us see whether our config server works fine or not i'm going to create a variable that is going to read the property file from the yaml And I'm going to return this property key in the backup method. It is a good practice to add a default value to your property keys because in some cases the config server goes down and if your application is not able to read your properties, you will at least get a default value out of it and the entire application will not go down because of not able to read a property key. So make sure that whenever you use at the rate of value on any variable, it has a default implementation in it. All right, so our property key implementation is done. Let us quickly take a look at our web console. All right, the config server is now up and running. It has been successfully created. You need to give the git details in the config server so that your config server will be able to fetch the properties and make it available for the Spring Boot applications. So for this, let us go to settings and let us try to configure this instance. Select JSON. It is much easier to do it as JSON. Copy the git URI and paste it here. Next, Need to mention the search path. All right, my Git configurations has been configured in a JSON format. Let us click on update. Let us give it some time for the config server to get updated with the git. Our config server is up and running. Let us click on the config server and click on manage. Our config server is online. It is now successfully connected to our git repository. 
Now let us go back to our Spring Boot application and let us try to update the manifest YAML. Let us quickly build this application and let us push it to Cloud Foundry. The build is success. Now let us do a CF push to deploy our application to Pivotal Cloud Foundry. All right, the deployment is successful. Now let us go to our console. I'm going inside simple client. Now do you see all the three services are bounded to the simple client. Let us quickly take a look at our Eureka. Our Eureka registry is working fine. Seven instances of simple client has been registered to the service registry. And now let us go to our pivotal and let us try to access this URI. When I access this URI, the Hystrix metric should automatically flow to the circuit breaker managed services and also the config server should fetch the property file from the git repository and display it to you instead of the default value mentioned in the Java code. All right, looks like our application is working perfectly. Testing from config server and GitHub. This is the value that we have given in the application.yaml of the GitHub account. So our application is now successfully using the config server, the circuit breaker, and the service registry managed services of Pivotal Cloud Foundry. If you are interested in some advanced concepts with respect to service registry, circuit breaker, and config server, I suggest please take a look at the Pivotal documentation. All the information that I mentioned are present in the Pivotal documentation. The JSON object that they created is taken out from here. You have different parameters that you can create. You can configure the private key, you can encrypt the properties, you can do a lot of stuff with this. So if you're looking for more advanced concepts, right, you can take a look at this. With this, we come to the end of this video and I really hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video. Please subscribe for more such videos. Thank you guys.